say all praise glory and honor be unto you how about shouldn't have a shot you know double honors unto the apostles of GMS um, <clears throat> the true elders and leaders of the nation of Israel on earth today it's your brother Malcolm coming at you with another lesson of truth and history all right um and, uh, oh, and I'd like to say salutations to the Akim out there on the four corners of the earth that are doing this work in truth and sincerity, that are risking their lives and their freedom to do so. Um, this is going to be episode number four in the series of uh, Prophets in Prisons, or Prisons and Prophets, I forget. But, uh, but anyway, we're back into the book. Um, one dies, get another. But that's literally what Esau thinks about you. He will work you until you are dead. All right? And he just go get another one right out the prison. Okay, but uh, this is uh, series number four, and I'm starting on. Um, and this is back into the uh, labor portion of the uh, of the book, and it says uh, elsewhere. However, even plantations, even on plantations, the task system was combined with squad. An anonymous Arkansas prisoner, writing around 1910, described the squad system. Squad number was expected to pick. 400 to 500 pounds of cotton per day. Squad number two, 300. Squad number three, 200 pounds. The squads were based on convicts, work classifications. They were whipped for not completing their task. Sounds a lot like, uh, you know, this is once again that movie 12 Years a Slave comes up because you, you know, it gave you a good example of, of a plantation or, or, or task punishment when you don't meet it. All right? If you remember how the slaves were uh, punished when they didn't meet their quotas, man. All right? Um, from the beginning, Alabama's convict miners were also separated by strength and ability, the old slave categories. In, in 1882, Warden John Bankhead reported that the state receiving $12 per month for first-class miners, $8 for second, and $4 for third-class hands. So that would, you can equate that to the prison system today because it pays to have the prison system filled. And this whole system that they use to subjugate and railroad Jake off to these prisons, it's the same thing being done today with this false war on drugs. Where Esau creates, manufactures the drugs, manufactures the guns, all right, and then he places them in neighborhoods, uh, uh, predominantly where so-called black and brown people live. And they make up the majority of the people that are locked up in these privatized prisons, man. Uh, let's get a, a scripture. This is uh, the book of uh, James, verses uh, 4 and 5. I'm, I'm pretty sure I read that scripture before, but I'm going to read it again. Because um, we're coming down to the wire on, on Esau, man. You know, his time is running short. Uh, and he's almost out of here, man. I mean, everything's falling apart. Yeah, this is James. I believe it's, uh, what did I write down? Five. Yeah, four and five. It says, uh, Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped have entered into the ears of the of, of Yahweh Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been one time. You have nourished your hearts in the days of slaughter. And I was just downtown with, with my woman the other day. So I have to believe it was yesterday. And took pictures of, uh, of, of mansions that sit elevated in the sky as I was walking by. Them, you know, because Esau has, has uh, lived deliciously, man. And they still do. Get a couple more scriptures. This is... Uh, Leviticus 19 and 13. So let's go to the to Leviticus 19 and 13. And it reads, Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. So not only are you not, even even when you work on a job, man, you are supposed to be paid at the end of the day. You know, I've, I've often said, you know, how much easier would it be for individuals if you got a portion of your check every day? Because sometimes you're totally in flat broke 
until the next pay period. But you know, if you got a little bit of money every day, then it will be up to you to to manage and take care of your finances. But at least you have a fresh source of income every day. And if you if you have something to work with to do things that you needed to do, man. But not under the control of this so-called white man, man. He's just, like you said, he's clean contrary to the scriptures. This is Deuteronomy uh, 24 and 15. All right. Oh, I'm in numbers. Salakia. Yeah, 24 and 15. And it reads, At this day thou shall give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor, and set of his heart upon it. Let's cry against thee unto Yahweh, and it be sin unto thee. So it's a sin to hold back a man's pay, um, and even more so to make him work for nothing, man. Right? Because there's a scripture that, that clearly reads, if, if, if a man stealeth another man, and he be found in his hands, man, he shall surely be put to death. Well, guess what? The Israelites are still in the hands of the so-called white man. They're in the hands of the bankers now. Via the birth certificates and the social security numbers, man. All right. Let's continue back in the book. Uh, since the task, as reported elsewhere in TCI mines, were three to four hundred tons per man, the task assigned um, at this time, Coal, uh, Coal Creek is about four tons of coal per day. Reported at Tennessee Housing Invested Community. That's your, t that's, I believe, uh, no, that's T-H-I, in 1885. The task per class hand in Alabama was given in 1889 as four tons, all right? Uh, TCI was taken over by, by a, a company called ACMC, and you can go to uh, mine, uh, mineartifacts.org, Alabama, to see the images of and how horrific they were and look at all the wealth that they accumulated, man. So what I'm reading you, this is actual history and real things that happened, man. The Jake, and so a lot of these, these Fortune 500 corporations, man, that are around today, um, they were they were founded off slave labor and then they were continued by free convict la labor of the, those very said slaves, man. So these Edomites have, have, you know, who call themselves Christians and they're such good and pious people, man. They're, they're, they're as wicked as all outdoors. And then the first thing they begin to scream when you point these sort of things out is that I wasn't there and it wasn't me and my parents were immigrant. No, your parents benefited from the thievery that their brethren did. And if you were such a good Christian, then, you know, all this other crap that you, you portrayed or claimed to be, man, you, you're not trying to give back your fancy house, your fancy cars. You're not surrendering over all this money, which you know that was, was that, that you got, you know, through wicked ways, through through murder, rape, robbery, and steal, and slavery, man, through false imprisonment of of of, uh, of men who had children and families and wives that they never saw again, man. So you were still ripping it and tearing uh, uh, uh families apart, man. Okay. Um, flipping a couple pages, it says uh, the early years of leasing were categorized by drive of the economy. The course, the uh, core, core coin of all costs. In 1882, Alabama's bankhead said that the prison stockades in his state that are built in most cases with the view of, of the strictest economy while Georgia's convicts before the 20-year lease were the 20 years lease. Man, they just gave you a 20-year sentence, man. For free, this is ridiculous, man. And sometimes just over jaywalking, man, or talking back to a so-called white man. That would that was enough to uh to ledge or getting caught drinking in public. When I see them mice walk down the street, especially after a Cubs or or, or Bears games, man, they walking down the street with beer and alcohol in their hands, man. They don't get arrested. All right. Um, it says, while Georgia's convicts before the twenty year lease were, in the words of principal keeper, the managed by hiring selected generally for the ability to drive with severity rather than hold securely. In Tennessee, in eighteen eighty five. House Minority Report said convicts are whipped for various causes. The most common, which is is for not getting the task done each day. Let me go to uh, to the Apocrypha, Second Ezra. This is going to be fast. This isn't going to be a long sit down. But this is Second Ezra, eleven and forty. Um, it 
it says, um, and the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past and had power over the world with great fearfulness over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. And so long time dwelt upon earth with deceit. And that fourth kingdom is, 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 is basically America, man. Because America is an extension of Rome, man. Alright? So with much wicked oppression, oppression, you're still ruling over the people, man. You falsify news. You, you, you murder people. Alright? You do, you, you, you do false flag events where people die. And, uh, you know, and then you get away with it. You, you, these Edomites, man, you create these falsified incidents which become actual history, which you've lied about, which is an easy thing to prove. Then you turn around and make movies about them. You make movies glorifying lies, man. And it's funny how that, that thing about Osama bin Laden, that SEAL team for people who didn't know, but that so-called SEAL team that, that, that killed uh, Osama bin Laden, who was already dead, um, um, from from what I understand, from what I've heard, all the members of that SEAL team is dead now because dead men don't talk, man. It's funny how they all ended up dead, all right? Why? Because they don't, you know, they don't want them going on TV and giving interviews and act, answering questions and stuff like that because they'll they'll mess around and get caught up, man. Why? Because that whole thing was a lie, man. Okay. Um, back into the book, the sugar mill itself. Represents a large capital investment as well. As Sidney Metz describes, the circumstances of sugar making was drama both of misery and marvelous skill and danger. Boiling and striking, transferring the liquid, all right, and the arrested is boiling. It's boiling when it is ready. Require great skill. The sugar boilers are arte are were artisans powering. There were considerable danger involved. And the time was enhanced throughout from moment when the cane was per perfect for cutting until the semi-crystalline product was poured into molds to drain and be dried. During the harvest, the mills operated unceasingly and the labor requirements were horrendous. So when you're watching these old black and white movies with all the little Edomite kids with their lollipops and their suckers and all their little Christmas candies and their Halloween candies, those candies, that the sugar that was being pressed uh, um, and being made was being made in a very dangerous manner, which, like I said, if one dies, get another. It was a very dangerous process, and it was, be done, it was being done through prison labor, man. Okay? Uh, it says, in the latter part of the 19th century, technological improvements on the mill combined with construction of railroad lines increased greatly the demand of cane. Plantations worked by convicts Therefore, would demand enormous labor inputs. Georgia prisoners, as early as 1870, were paid in tobacco for Sunday work. Texas penitentiary, so now they're going to get you to destroy yourself, destroy your temple, by paying you in tobacco. Because you, you, you locked up, and, one, and, and a lot of people will smoke when they get, when they get stressed out, man. All right? And so, that's what they had the, these inmates doing. They, you know, that become like a, a small getaway. Of, then you, you create this habit and this... this addiction, all right, and you ruining your body, man. So Esau got you caught up, man. And then when they let you go, they know that they're going to make money because that same person who worked for it for free is not going to go out and buy it every time they got money, man. Boy, East, man, this, 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 this Edomite, man, they got to they pay, man. It says, uh, but anyway, it says Georgia prisoners as early as 1870 were being paid in tobacco for Sunday work. Texas penitentiary ledgers show convicts receiving extra pay for working nights and Sundays, especially during harvest and, and processing time. The rate of 50 cents per day or 50 cents per night for the work in Harlem Plantation sugar cane uh, rolling in 1889 uh, season, for example, Dave Washington earned 1650 for working 26 nights and 7 days, while Steve White worked 4 nights for $2. Interesting. And the 7 days while Steve White worked for, uh, we had 4 nights for $2, um, so it was a difference between a, a Edomite convict and a Jake convict. The Edomite convict actually made a little bit of money, man. Jake, and then Jake didn't get the money anyway. It went to the institution he was being, he was in prison for, man. Um, it says, although Harlem Farm 
was a state-owned rather than lease farm, the practice of paying for extra work was customary on these lease and share farms. Now let's get a few more scriptures and I'm going to go into uh, uh, um, the book uh, Hidden Heroism just to give you an example of how rough the sugar plantations were during the time of slavery, man. And, and then, you know, in correlation to what we just read in the book. But this is Revelation 18 and 6. And it reads, Reward her even as she has rewarded you, and double unto her according to her works. And the cup which she has filled, fill unto her double. So you Edomites are going to get double the, uh, the pain of destruction, man. This is Psalms uh, 137. Eight, and it reads, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward of thee as thou hast served us. All right, and happy shall we be, man. All right, because you're going to go into slavery. That is justice. Justice is to, to, to pay back for what you have done. Not saying, I'm sorry, get over it, or I, uh, uh, I gave you welfare. I gave you a job opportunity. No, you gave us prison, you gave us crap, and you gave us false history. All right? And, and we don't want your money, we don't want your gold, we want your ass, man. You're going into slavery. All right? This is Revelation uh, 14 and 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture in a cup. Of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So you're going to be burned and destroyed in the presence of Yahweh Shai, man. This is Jeremiah 50. And Jeremiah had a heavy portion, man. It's a big book. Uh... Verses 9 and 15, verse 9, uh, it says, For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken, the arrow shall be as a mighty expert, as a mighty expert man, None shall return in vain, man. So all these nations are setting themselves in battle array against the so-called white man, man. They're all joining together, man. And they're going to destroy you, Edomites, man. Through the power of you, how about you, was shot. Shot against her round about. This is verse 15, Salakia. Je Jeremiah 50 and, 50 and 15. Shot against her round about. She, ha she hath given her hand. For her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of Yahweh. Take vengeance upon her, and she have, as she have done, do unto her. So anyone who says that you know that you're not supposed to strike back, you're a lie, man. The Lord said, "Do do unto her as she has done, man." So that means you're gonna dash their children against the stone. You're gonna have your way with their women. You're gonna sell their women and their children into slavery. All right. You're just gonna oh, and you just keep counting down the list, man. I don't have enough fingers to to put up all the things that they've done. All right. Um. And now I'm going to go into this book of Hidden Heroism, which, which uh, is one series away from going back into this book to cover information that I hadn't. But this is uh, page uh, uh, 11, which is a history about Thomas Thistlehorn, or Thistlewood, who was a uh, sugarcane plantation owner. So this, that, so this learned plantation process was learned during the times of slavery, and, and like you said, they like 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 the book has an information I've told you, slavery was reborn through the prison system. All right, but this is page eleven in the hidden heroism. West Indian Indies slaves were were African born. Unruly West Indian slaves were flogged savagely because they were, you know, they were men, and you know, you're trying to make them work and and have your way with them and have the way with their women, and they weren't having it, man. So they had to break them. And we are, I don't even want to talk about the buck breaking, what they would do to, to big strong men to uh, belittle them and, and break them, man. But it says, uh, some even killed, but given the shortage of slaves, slub lethal punishment was preferred. For example, the English Jamaican plantation owner named Thomas Thistlewood, all right, recorded in his diary 
that after a slave ate some sugar cane, he should have been harvesting because he probably was hungry after working all damn day long. All right, he ordered the man flogged, then bound in a prone position. So he was bound laying down. That's what prone means. All right, and face up. Okay, while another slave was ordered to shit in his mouth. And as for a senior student of the West Indian slavery could judge from Thistlewood's diary, the man did not appear to have been a sadist. Similar forms of brutal and degrading punishment were common throughout the Caribbean from, from, the, uh, from, the Danish, from, from Danish to Spanish territory, man. All right? So, with that, you know, I'm going to say that, that, you know, you, you people who, who have this, God loves and he forgives all. You're, you're sadly mistaken, man. That is not in the scriptures, man. All right? So with that, I hope this lesson was edifying. And I like to say all praise, glory, and honor be unto you. How about she now was shy? You know? And salutations to the Akim out, that are out there. All right? And, 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 and to the elect, the hopeful one-third, you know, the brothers and sisters that may be listening and learning. To you, I say shalom.